Supreme Court of the United States is saving the uh, biggest and potentially the best for last. That decision to wrap up its uh, its term on whether a former president can be granted immunity from criminal prosecution. Donald Trump and his uh, defense team looking for that. Could it happen on Monday? Could we get that? Uh, if you cut both ways, Tom Dupree, the former deputy assistant attorney general, on what's at stake. Tom, what do you think? Uh, it, it, obviously, this would be a decision that would come up on Monday. The, the Supreme Court justice was saying this would be the day. Um, all, all of that would be wrapping up, so this presumably would be among those decisions. What, what do you predict? I think we will see the immunity decision on Monday morning. Uh, the Supreme Court, as you know, typically back ends its most important decisions. These are the complicated cases. These are cases that often produce dissenting opinions, which of course takes more time to draft and to release. But I think Monday is the day that we've all been waiting for. And I do think the Supreme Court is going to recognize some form of presidential immunity. I'm not sure they're going to go 100% of the distance that Trump wants them to go, but I think they are going to reverse the lower court. And I think they will recognize meaningful presidential immunity. Even a, a, an adjustment uh, in that, and not a black and white decision, not, you know, 100% one way, 100% the other way, at the very least, it, it could delay, if not cancel, some of these cases against Donald Trump, couldn't it? That's exactly right. I mean, if you look at the D.C. case alone, I think whatever the Supreme Court decides is going to take some further homework by the district judge. I think she is going to have to parse the allegations in Jack Smith's indictment and figure out which ones, which allegations are subject to whatever immunity the Supreme Court recognizes and which aren't. That's not something that can be done overnight. And when you think about how long it's going to take for her to do that and then how long it would take the parties to actually prepare for a trial, I don't see any way that this case gets tried before the election. So that, that would involve even a decision not friendly to the former president. So a delay is something that, of course, the, the Trump defense team has, you know, perfected. And I'm just wondering, so even a, a blanket decision that doesn't go the former president's way would be deemed a victory if, 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 if you want to argue push it all back. Sure. If you look at it through that lens, in other words, even a defeat, if it causes a delay, would be a victory, then I think it is going to be a victory no matter how you slice it. And look, the Supreme Court actually took this case and processed this case very quickly by Supreme Court standards. I know that people are complaining and saying, how come it's taking them so long? But keep in mind, they did fast track this case. They heard, got expedited briefing. They heard expedited argument, which at least by Supreme Court standards is lightning fast. You know, um, you can help me with this, Tom. You're a great lawyer. I'm not, but as I told you, I watch a lot of legal shows, so I think I qualify. But uh, one thing I noticed, and maybe with uh, Chief Justice John Roberts, that he tries to craft decisions or reframe them in a way that he can get more than just like a 5-4 vote, um, so that it's not all conservatives one way, all liberals the other, uh, or progressives. I, I, I'm, if, if you did that with this case, how would you parse it to get, let's say, something that isn't narrowly one way or the other? Yeah, and look, you're exactly right. That, I am 100% certain, is what the chief has been trying to do behind the scenes, to try to get as many votes for an opinion as he can muster. I think he's got a big task if he hopes to get a unanimous decision. I don't see that happening. But I think, to your point, what he will do is try to articulate a standard that the liberals, even the liberals, recognize makes sense in this context. Because keep in mind, even the liberal justices don't want a universe where Trump gets elected in November and then turns around and tries to prosecute former President Biden for various things, as he suggested he might do during the debate. So I think that's the chief's task, is to articulate a rule that the liberals will agree to, recognizing that someday, and it will be, the shoe will be on the other foot. Um, what did you make of Donald Trump saying that? Was that a threat? You know, I think he was really highlighting what the consequences would be if the Supreme Court were to reject presidential immunity. He right. made no secret that if he comes into office, that's something that would be on the table. And I think everyone took that, not so much as a threat, but I think really just illustrating what the world would look like, what our political scene would look like if there were no presidential immunity. And now that, you know, kind of the, the, the lid has been taken off the jar and you see former presidents getting prosecuted for things, is that really the world that we want to live in? Got it. Um, so we'll know one way or the other Monday. Tom, thank you very much. Good seeing you on a Saturday, no less. Appreciate it. Tom Dupree, right. lawyer extraordinaire. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmey. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.